carries over their hot second half. These old Big 12 rivals are underway. Nebraska in the white uniforms controlling the opening tip. And John, what do you expect here early? Solid on both ends of the floor. Nebraska veteran team that looked great last night. Tech was outstanding in the second half. Tough man to man defensive team is Texas Tech. This team for Nebraska playing at a high level right now, averaging almost 90 points per game to start the year. 4-0 on the season. Shot clock winding down. Here's James Palmer shuffling his feet. That's the it's a game. Only had eight. Didn't force the issue. So he was good at making passes. And if you're Nebraska, you cannot be hesitant against the Texas Tech defense. They'll eat you alive. Alley -oop. Mooney to Owens, and it just failed to click. Great pass from Owens to Colbert. The Red Raiders are on the board. The continuation from last night. Solid offensive beginning. 18 points, 9 rebounds last night for Palmer. Palmer attacks, scores, and one. Yeah, Palmer had, like you said, your last shot with both fouls. That put him on the bench for offensive fouls. He had five turnovers in the game. We've seen him turn it over once here tonight. But hits at the line. It's a 3-2 Nebraska lead. Culver. Mouse Beard in his third year in Lubbock. Has to put Odiase on the bench with two early fouls. A minute and 20 seconds into this one of the big man is out. Former candidate for Big Ten Player of the Year. Ducks it inside for Roby. And Roby second half last night for Roby. Finished with 13-7. Four assists, three blocks. And he's a pretty good foul shooter, too. 14 of 17. Has four players averaging double figures. The team is averaging 20 assists per game. They had 20 last night. It's it's really been impressive to watch this team here in the early going. Yeah, unselfish. Fun to watch. They trust each other. Easy to see. Davide Moretti. The native of Italy throws it in with great touch. He was so spectacular in the second half last night. The confidence off the dribble. Spotted up and made threes. Another offensive weapon. Tied a career high with 17 points yesterday. Texas Tech overplays passing lanes and does not let you get into offensive sets easily. It's a great defense to watch. Palmer shoots over the deep, hits the three. And when he hits one, he's going to shoot a bunch. Confidence player. That's his sixth three-point make this year. He hasn't shot it well from out there yet, but maybe that's his sign it's going to change. The lead is four. Picked off. Roby, a three-on-two for the Huskers. Palmer dumps it off for So Palmer showing you what he does offensively. He can score it, and not only that, he can give it to a teammate. Welcome to Kansas City, Husker fan. Lincoln South. A lot of big red here tonight. Culver in the corner. Can't hush the crowd. What a save. Tariq Owens gets back into the play. A huge hustle play by Owens. Another possession. Tech needs a bucket. Moretti. No. And Watson clears for Nebraska. Roll to the hoop. Finds Watson on the wall. Roby tips it back up. Great play by Roby. Palmer for three. Copeland keeps it alive. And finally, Mooney will bring it up the floor for Texas Tech. Any, any coaching staff will love the fact if he can get three offensive shots. Yeah. Chris Beard not happy with the lack of rebounding by this red ring. We're under 16 now in the first half. Media rates. Not yet. Roby with the block. Look at Copeland handle at 6 9. Watson hits the three. They defend at the rim, and they can all run. And Clay, what's obvious, it can all handle it. They can all push it. They don't have to look for a point guard to push the pace of the offensive end. That's Shot Tracker live analytics here tonight. 
Coaches can use it on their iPad Pro right on the bench. It's a fun tool. We're going to talk more about it throughout the night. Three balls off the mark for Adigo. His comeback was for Chris Beard's Red Raiders. He was hoping to lead wire to wire tonight. It's not going to be the case. Well, even the last shot, uh, Adigo shoots that shot. That's not his shot, right? And if you do that against a veteran team like Nebraska, they're going to make you pay. Roby. I love the aggressiveness with Roby when he puts it on the floor and tries to attack. Palmer does attack, and that's going to be an offensive foul. But once a player leaves his feet, and Palmer again likes to jump sideways. If you're a defender, try to get there. Hard to do. Texas Tech over its last four. They haven't scored in more than three minutes. Tech needs Culver or Moody to step up and look for a shot. Got to free him up. Got to get open. So Palmer, you know, the offensive fouls have been a bit of a problem for him. We'll keep an eye on that. Shot clock at five. Edwards, nice bounce pass. Look out for Andigo. Palmer gets beat on the dribble. Terrific move, and then doesn't hustle back into play. Malik Andigo, the 6'10 sophomore from Arizona, and the scoring drought is over for Tech. And Chris Beard, just like last night, they're down. They will settle in defensively. That's how they win. Best defense in the Big 12 last year. That partially blocked by Culver. Man, they're always getting a hand in your face. And Culver, tripping athlete, quick off his feet. Long has been mentioned on various All-American teams. Honorable mention. This is Matt Mooney, the transfer from South Dakota. I think he's got a hood his shot now and then. He was a facilitator last night in the first half. Second half, he was better at trying to look for a shot. Shot clock at three. Edwards has to hurry. Shot clock violation, going to wave it off. Nebraska's got it. Copeland, Roby, dunk. 6-9, 6-8, coming at you with the ball. Running with grace, and they are feeding off this crowd here in Kansas City. It feels like Pinnacle Bank Arena to a certain extent. Great crowd, great atmosphere. Two big time teams looking for a win. Old rivals from the Big 12 Conference. How about the defense for Nebraska forcing a late shot clock again? Hustle back defensively. Cornhuskers on a roll on both ends of the floor. 22 wins last year, best season under Tim Miles, but they missed the NCAA tournament. That is the goal this year. Anything less than that, it'll be a disappointment. Copeland for three from the wing. Bit of a line drive shot that night. Mooney hasn't attempted a shot yet. Owens got it to go on Kilter. It, it, you mentioned it. He was above the rim a lot. Well, it, it was a highlight show. It was. It, 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 it woke up this arena, and it even comes here, and the Nebraska fans, I mean, the Texas Tech fans, and, and, and Red Raiders got to see, if they got to see it on TV, fans got to see what they'll see all yeah. season long. Good defender. Also can score. That's another offensive foul on Palmer. This is what happened last. As a slap going the other way. Mooney's first field goal attempt. Way off. Now, like you said, John, he heated up late, so don't count him out yet. And he heated up when USC went to the zone defense. Remember, locks in a quick trigger, nothing there. Mooney again, wasting no time going to the rack. Owens got the miss. Back on the perimeter, Edwards off balance. He gets the carom. Mooney into the lane. That's a looking foul and one. And the Nebraska did since then. You call that inspiring? Inspiring. So he, he said he wouldn't want his daughter to have heard what he said. In the whatever it was, it worked. Well, this is a guy, Chris Beard, who's built a terrific program at Texas Tech. Elite eight last year. Impressive on the defensive end. They're solid, right? That you don't get beat off the dribble much. One shot attempt. Offensively, they only have 11 turnovers a game. There's another block by Owens.
one to go here in the half. Classic powered by Shot Tracker. And we expect a dandy here tonight. 4 0 Texas Tech, 4 0 Nebraska. And it's 15 3rd Huskers alongside John Sunvold. I'm Clay Maffick and John. Great start for Nebraska in this game, but now Texas Tech has settled in. A little bit like last night. Nebraska solid in their veteran play. Took an early lead, but Tech, because they're good on the defensive end, clawing back, getting better shots offensively. Now on a 7 0 run. For Nebraska playing at a high level. That shot is off the mark for a Kenton, and here come the Red Raiders. Early possessions, Nebraska might be able to get an offensive rebound. Not so much the last five trips down. Tech solid, and the guy Culver has been able to take him off the dribble, free up guys on the outside, and now they're converting. And it's Brandon Francis with the three, and Texas Tech has its first lead since the early stages of this game, when it was 2-0. And what's happened is Culver has become so good off the dribble, Nebraska has not been able to contain. Patrick Mahomes, the Texas Tech alum, in attendance here tonight after last night's good game. That one's not a good USC team. Impressive offensively. Defensively, they did what Chris Beard's teams do. They shut down USC, shut down second shots, and they handled it well offensively, and the shooters made shots. Francis got his own miss. Tries to muscle it back up. Another opportunity for Clinton. And the stick back. And Chris Beard is fired up on that Texas Tech sideline. Let's call it big boy basketball, right? It's in the paint. Not so many jump shots. It's a 12 0 run for the Red Raiders. And the Huskers have to find an answer, and most of this has been with their best. Palmer picked up his second foul. Both fouls, offensive fouls here tonight, which was the case yesterday for Palmer. He was out early with two offensive fouls. And again, Palmer is a guy that goes off the dribble. So defenders last night and tonight are trying to get charges. It's usually not his guy. It's the weak side guy helping out. Palmer's got to have a jump stop in the lane and then deliver. Here's Copeland. Got that. He was terrific yesterday. 23 points, 7 rebounds against Missouri State. Copeland has the ability to score inside and outside as a face-up three ball. A lot of new faces for Texas Tech coming off that Elite Eight run last year. Andigo, a little strong. Boy, the second chance out of these for Texas Tech are coming in bunches. And the bigs for the Huskers are getting pushed around. And when they shut off a guy, the weak side guy is staring at the ball, not his man. They are not blocking out. They're getting beat up inside. Allen tried to free up Roby underneath. And what's sure is that Nebraska's better with James Palmer on the court. They built a nine-point lead with him on the floor. And then when he was out, Texas Tech came roaring back. Here's Palmer now for the Huskers. Allen, baseline for Nebraska. Solid, solid play by Tim Miles out of the timeout. The Huskers had to have that answer. It's semi a home court advantage for Nebraska. Great fans that have traveled down from Lincoln and various parts of Nebraska. And they were loud early, but they've been quiet. Culver goes to the other side of the rim, can't finish. Here's Allen. He's got a bigger role in the offense this year for Nebraska. Uh, they want goaltending, and Digo swatted at it. No whistle. Culver off the dribble, the key for Texas Tech. Rolls in, Baldwin. Nebraska has not been able to stop him off the dribble. So give him a step, make him beat you with his jump shot. Don't let him get to the rim, and don't make yourself have to double team so he can kick it out. One Very the, good off the bounce. One of the best freshmen in the Big 12 last year. I expect a big sophomore season for Culver. Not everybody is gone. A lot of the stars from last year's Elite 18 are gone. Three goes in, and if Culver hits his three-point shots, most impossible to go. Point with the steal. And he's yes, by Would give 
Duke a fight tonight. It sounds like that's happened. Well, they ranked eighth, eighth in the country. Solid uh, guard player. There's Tim Miles in her seventh year at Nebraska, 52 years old, got a one-year extension. This is a big year for him and this team. They haven't made the NCAA tournament since 2014. And this might be, might be the best team they've had in program history. A lot of experts are saying so, and that's 10 seconds. Nebraska wasn't in a trapping defense yet. A great November ball game. Two teams from great leagues. They're getting after each other. It's a wake-up call for what basketball is going to be like when they get to conference. Andrew Stephan. Copeland announced he was coming back to play at Nebraska. we been for Tim Miles. Well, a huge relief. And it's smart by Copeland to come back, get another year. He can play somewhere next year professionally. I don't know where. 9 of 14 from the field. Had a three, had it inside, played above the rim. Was solid on the defensive end. Here's the pressure again. Moody, the grad transfer from South Dakota University. Shot clock under 10. Mooney feeds the corner. Culver against Copeland. Gets around him. Got it up, but not him. And they're going to call shot clock back. Nice to have a 6'9 player like Isaac Copeland that you can move defensively around on the floor. Palmer is back on the bench for Nebraska. Let's see what the Huskers can do without their star. And they turn it off. Guys went out. If Copeland takes a step to the bucket, he's got a hoop. No, he didn't take a step to the bucket. A good pass by Roby, but a turnover. We've seen him pass very well here the last couple of days. 20 assists last night. That's a very good team. They shoot over 50% because they pass the ball well. Francis, a strong guy with the ball, capable of making good jump shots. It's not been a great shooting half for Texas Tech. They were 9 of 33 in the first half yesterday. They're 9 of 24 here tonight. But let's be honest, the people who know the Red Raiders basketball, that's a trap. They don't always have to shoot at Raiders, as they rarely make a turnover that leads to a basket on the other end. Just as I say that, here comes us. Roby. And a travel call relies heavily on him, especially when it comes to defense. And you never see defensive coaches happy. Right? I mean, they're always frustrated because that's what they study. They think they should shut out somebody. Outstanding coach. Smart move by Chris Beard. Half on the bench. Francis and Roby took a swat at him. But he got around the play. Red shirt senior that started his career at Florida. Good off the bounce. Physical body. 6'5, 215, 218. You rarely knock him off balance. He was in the doghouse for a while here at Texas Tech. He has really turned his career around the sixth year. Isaiah Roby at the line for Nebraska. Misses the free throw. He's been good at the line. We're tied up under four minutes to go first half here in KC. The Huskers average 89 points a game in their first four ball game. Now they're going to be challenged. Can you win when it's in the 60s or low 70s? That's where Tech wants them. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a, that's what conference play is about. It's what league play gets in. It gets ugly sometimes. And Nebraska's going to be in that league, the Big Ten, and some nights are tough and ugly. And you got to learn how to be physical and shot. Francis, this is from outside. Owens, Mooney, Culver, and Moretti all scored in double figures in the second half. Huskers are better in their half-court sets when bodies are moving. When they stand and just try to find a guy open, they're not as efficient. Yeah. Glenn Watson from the corner. Got it out. And this crowd that was so loud the first five minutes has been awfully quiet here in the switch set. Matchup zone, 1-3-1. One, one. They're long right down the middle. You got Palmer, you got Roby, you got Coker on the back end. Francis, the floater. But guys who like to put it on the floor don't mind zone defense. We often hear shooters love zones. 
but guys that can put it on the floor can get into seams. So they like that there's not one person in front of them. They'll eat up zones off the dribble. They'll hit floaters. They'll make passes open shooters. Nebraska built a nine-point lead less than five minutes into this game. It also kind of protects James Palmer that has two fouls. The problem is the last two possessions on their zone defense, they've given up dribble penetration. Copeland now with eight. Mooney's pass a little off the mark, but Culver saves it in the corner. Drive. Left it short, and Roby, another rebound. Solid defense, they went back to man to man. Palmer, going to work. Baseline pass, Copeland. Oh, he finished. You got a good pass from Palmer, your teammate. Copeland, you have to finish. Here's Francis. He's been part of the reason the team's been so good off the bench. That he finds Mooney, who's been a slow starter again this evening, but he's got five now. Communication is the key on the defensive end. When you watch Tech, they sit in, but they understand what angles, and their weak side defense like that's terrific. And the only one can make them pay is to make open shots, and right now the Huskers are not doing it. The Huskers 3 of 12 from 3. They're averaging almost 30 attempts per game. They were 13 of 33 last night. Glad to run. The kid can stretch the defense, right? Facilitator because he's good and solid with the ball, but he makes open jump shot. He can take it at his pace off the bounce. A, a terrific addition for Chris Beard and the Red Raiders this season. At 15.47 of this game, Beard called it out. Since then, it's been a different Texas Tech team. Here's Mooney again. Wow. Didn't rush it. He didn't hurry it. He took a look to his right and looked behind him. Now, I'm going to show, I'm going to do it at my pace, finish the play. Smart play. He's got nine points. This is his third stop. Air Force, South Dakota, and now at Texas Tech. And what a grad transfer addition he has been. He came from Vermilion, South Dakota, down to Lubbock, Texas, 2-3 zone. <laughs> is long enough and tall enough, they've got to be able to just physically keep Tech away from attacking the paint. One thing that really stood out as you look at this half stats is no bench points, none for Nebraska. Now, they're not a deep team, but zero bench points, 13 bench points for the Red Raiders in contrast. Anytime a guy comes off the bench, what you want production. Doesn't necessarily have to be scoring, but it can be assists, it can be rebounds. And here we go again. Look at, look at the aggressive play by the This is physical play, and you've got to be able to, with your body underneath, be able to. I think coaches have to trust guys. Now, what you do is give a step to your guy, just don't get beat off the dribble, challenge some shots. Seems like Palmer's been in foul trouble since he got off the bus here in Kansas City. And again, normally penetrating people like Palmer pick up offensive fouls and charges. He's got to be careful. He considered turning pro, came back to Lincoln, hoping to lead this team to a conference title. Off the heel there, Roby tracks it down. And they will keep moving players in and out. Chris Beard is challenging. Odiase back in the game, John, and he's playing with a couple of fouls. He got two early in this one. Tariq Owens at 6'10", defended the out-of-bounds player, and he, he blocked the, the, the ball. Turnover. in the paint. That's where they've been coming. And I'm not saying necessarily it's the inside problem for the Huskers. The guards are getting beat off the dribble, which puts all then the pressure for a big guy to help out, and then you can't box out your guy. Roby drives. Kicks to Glenn Watson. Now Copeland from the wing. On the mark. Good spacing. Good delivery. A needed bucket for this Husker team and this Husker crowd that is a majority in this building. And down five. They had a nine-point lead at one point in the first half. If they can go a little bit of a run and get this Husker crowd up and loud like the first five minutes of this game. Watson attacks, bumped by Mooney. 
up this Husker team. Whether he's scoring, or at least he's getting it to the rim and they get follow-ups. It's been a killer, someone's got to stay in front of him. And when he's not scoring, he's been passed so well in this tournament. Four black jerseys blocking out and around that rebound. Tech is not good offensively if the ball sticks. If the ball moves, and the bodies move under both Bobby Knight and his son Pat Knight. There's a toughness to the way he coaches, but but it's the only way, honestly, Texas Tech can win. I mean, they're not loaded with a bunch of four or five right. star players, right? Hey! Now five of the top six scores are gone from last year. This is gonna be somewhere down there. Well, I think Chris Beard and his staff have kind of got it into their players. No one really thinks you guys are very good. And there's a toughness and an edge to that coaching staff, which then gets to the players, and they're tough to handle. <laughs> Roby scoring. I love to see the aggressiveness when Isaiah Roby does it. It, 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 it. it energizes his ball club in Nebraska when he does it. Edwards tough. Got it. <laughs> you love kids that have an answer. The freshman. From Arlington, Texas. Answering back is Lou Watson. Okay. I get it, Red Ray. Let's have a shootout, right? Let's go back and forth. Second half last night, both teams were great. Let's have a good one. Here come the four half defense. Watson nearly forced to turnover. Third in the Big Ten and steals last year. Shot clock goes under 10. Say this is a neutral site. Yeah. Marini! Shot clock violation. Won an NCAA tournament game in program history. And they are on the edge of being ranked in certain polls. And if you said Nebraska with rankings, obviously you'd think of football. It's basketball. And they've got a team that can compete. Uh, Copeland stepped on the line to rattle. Right? No. They're going to play and they're going to be in every game they play this year. Yeah, it's a veteran team for Nebraska. Again, not deep. Tim Miles hoping to develop that depth throughout the back conference portion before Big Ten play. A Kenton was great off the bench yesterday. He hasn't made much of an impact here in this game. Good job by Roby. Got to keep his knees bent. Culver's the guy off the dribble that's killed him. Culver. That's him. Five, but he's just got long arms. Weighs about 200 pounds. Tough to stay in front of because of the way he shifts his body when he drives. He's got 10, he averages 17. Lead back to four for Texas Tech. Palmer. Allen. It's Thomas Allen, 10 on the shot clock. Again, if they stand, it's a difficult time to get shots up against a top defense. Uh, Copeland lost it, Mooney takes it away. And what? They did it last night when he was in foul trouble. The key for, I think, Nebraska is to get a stop or two and let them push the ball because that's what they do best. They also got to figure out a way to stop Culver, who goes to the seven. So who's a candidate to step up for Nebraska in Palmer's absence? We gotta get a, you got to get stops on the defensive end so that Nebraska post up and do those things. That only happens if you get defensive. If you don't, if you allow Culver to keep getting free throws or buckets, it allows Tech to get set. Puts a lot of pressure on Glenn Watson with the ball. It puts pressure on Allen. It puts pressure, and if they stand outside, again, harder cuts, got to take those shots when you have them. Big time, Allen doesn't pass up the shot, and he hits. Maybe he was a little too picky earlier. You know, last time down, he did not take the open shot. All of a sudden, the, it gets to be a scramble. Your teammate picks up the fourth personal foul. Take the shot when you have the shot. Your teammates are expecting it. Here's Mooney from the wing. Kenton back in the game for Nebraska. He is a great shooter off the bench. He had a great day yesterday. Can he get involved? And the Red Raiders, when a shot goes up, they get back offensively, so they won't give up an easy one. One and done are the Huskers. Owens tracks it down. Tough pass, probably not advised, but Owens gets it. Culver has to scramble for it. Still a lot of time. And poked away again. Owens steps into a two. And Nebraska has Jared Culver, an All-American candidate, has been so good and so difficult to continue. Allen 
Dumps it off for Copeland. A hooker. Off the rim. Edwards wasting no time. And now both teams have gone cold. Watson. Not much in the early offense, right? Not an easy push. Colbert and Copeland, the two stars, John. This is what they've done now. They're impressive players, and both teams rely heavily on them. Maybe Nebraska a little more on Copeland tonight. Offensively, he's averaging over 16 a game. Yeah, that defense may be underrated for Nebraska. Yeah. Already catch the inbound and hits. You know, most of the time playing with a veteran team, they communicate. They know to help each other out. They're challenged tonight because this Tech team is a very difficult one to play. Tough, they'll challenge you in every way. If the Huskers can get a win here, it's impressive. A Kenton, short court. Not a Kenton, the sophomore from Illinois. He's been lights out from three in this tournament. Steps up for the two there. Yeah, good ball fake, and he got himself to a good shot. He had 11 points last night off the bench. And those are the first bench points tonight for the Huskers. Odiasi got an early foul trouble. Almost got the roll. If they pounded in low, they are patient enough and deliberate enough to just make their move and allow the Tech is not a tall team. They are not long. They're thick. They're physical. You know, we talked about the mental aspect. There's another and gritty rebound. And Francis at 6'5 was not boxed out. Gives an opportunity again for Texas Tech. Culver. Kicks really good. Really good, fun to watch. The coolest thing about it, beloved Texas native. He's got 14. He averages just under 17. A Kenton over the top of the outstretched hands of Culver. Good hustle by Roby. Got hit hard by Culver. All right, Nebraska trailed 38-34 at the 15-10 mark when Palmer got his fourth foul. You can see that Texas Tech is slowly adding to their lead. A couple difference. Oh, well, one big difference from the, both offenses when you watch them. Tech has a lot of movement, a lot of cutting, and they cut hard and set picks. Nebraska gets caught sometimes on their offensive end. Standing, it's easier to, to, to defend standard. Mooney. Good hand. His pass swatted by Copeland. Mooney throwing the ball in path inside. Oh, Culver wow. left wide. No one hit. Wow. Tim Miles can't believe it. Biggest lead for Texas Tech. Double digits now. Allen. Quick grab. Board card is fouled. He right. His defense. Now the Bucs just got to hit their foul. Jared Culver. His zone chart powered by Shot Tracker. 40% from, from three. The red are his hot spots. You know, the impressive part is he's really changed tech offensively because of his of off the bounce. Right? He has attacked and put so much pressure and allowed his teammates to score in stuff. Well, they really make hard cuts. And that draws usually a second defender. Money on balance was looking for somebody to pass to. Copeland foul. It hasn't been a great football season in Lincoln. They're ready for basketball to be going full board. And tonight, this crowd is hungry for a response from their Husker team. Thirteen points now for Copeland. Georgetown Palmer and Palmer back in. See what they do. See if they zone it up the other end. They're going one-two-two zone here. 
Mooney goes to the rack. And Roby picks up that foul. NFL records. He has only one pick this year. And how about the return to Cleveland for LeBron? They'll look into that. That's it. Way through the second half. What's going to decide this ultimately? But I do. It goes back. Can the Huskers contain Culver off the dribble? Make Texas Tech beat them with jump shots and in their face? And then can that lead to some open look? There's only four transition buckets tonight for this Husker team. And they've got to start getting something from Palmer. He misses there. Nothing in the second half, points wise. Defense by Roby. Stayed on his feet. Smart play by Culver. Nothing forced by the Red Raiders. Mooney drops at the wall. Boy, Matt Mooney is a leader. His pace, his style, his strength of his upper body just rooted Watson out of the way. He's got 13 points. Travel call. And Mooney has scored four buckets around the rim in the paint. Amazing when you think. Yeah. And his position. 6-3. He's playing like a big tonight. Beard said he might be the best passer I've ever coached. Saying a lot, isn't it? And we've seen him score. We've seen him defend. We've seen him help others. And I thought last night and even tonight, they're better not only when he's passing, but when he's looking to score because it changes the defense that you have to play. Great defense by Texas Tech. Nothing's coming easy for the Nebraska. The Texas Tech defense held opponents to 65 points per game last year, first in the Big 12. And when we were talking to Chris Beard, he said, I think my guy that the Huskers tried to put pace in the second half, right? They pushed it up in a hurry to see what they could get. There was nothing there. Now they found that Tech is not a tall team. Nebraska's taller. It's just been the physicality of this Red Raider squad. Palmer out front with four fouls. Just has to be careful. No reach and hands up. Move your feet. Moretti feeds Culver, who's open. Yes! 20 for Culver. They've had an answer for everything. And for him. Last night, the first half uh, was a disaster. You know. But Beard recruits guys who want to be coached. They expect to be coached hard. Bob Knight did it that way with a lot of success. Beard cut from the same cloth, and he has guys that buy in. And they've got a fan base that appreciates how they play. Owens oh, popping out or taking it off the dribble. A uh, difference maker, and he's going to be all season. Fun to look at that shot tracker analytic. 14 points for Culver here in the half. And it's five seconds. Here for Copeland. They got to start hitting the free throws. And can the Huskers have a run? Like you said, they got to make free throws. Five of eight from the line is Copeland on the night. Mooney getting ready to check back in for Texas Tech. Grad transfer from South Dakota. Big 12 last year picked seventh this year. You see Kansas picked to win the league for the 15th straight year. But what we've seen the last couple of nights, John, you know, they look like they're going to do better than seventh in the league, and they look like they could contend for an NCAA tournament berth again. Well, Chris Beard knows what they have coming up when you get to Big 12 play. There's a reason why the RPI in the Big 12 is so high every season, right? And so if this team finishes seventh, they're still an NCAA team. Grow and grow and grow because these guys are going to get better night in, night out. They won't be perfect every night. They were perfect second half last night, and they have been so good. And they are handling a Nebraska team that could be one of the top teams in the Big Ten. Here they come again. Nebraska only five assists tonight, John. You talked about it at the top of the show. You know, they had 20 assists yesterday. That was key. They haven't had the help. They haven't had the open looks. They haven't made the shots tonight. Nebraska averages 89 points a ball game. 
They've got five buckets in transition. So Big Ten is going to look at this game and say, what's the formula? you got to contain and stop pressure so they don't get out and run and get easy looks. Watson. No. And he is limping a little bit. It's a dining schedule over the next month for Nebraska. They're at Clemson on Monday. Big Ten play starts early, December 2nd. And then they also play Creighton and Oklahoma State before Christmas. Well, what the NCAA does is requires teams to play people. And because the Huskers didn't make it a year ago, they had to up their schedule. It's going to be tough. Oh, Jason! The alley -oop from Culver, that didn't work out. Mooney took a shot to the face. Incidental cut. Chris Pierre, different programs. Remember, he was locked one 30 games. Yeah, 30 and five. Set Purdue in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I mean, he is a winner. Get the most out of his guys. And honestly, winning is fun. And when you build a culture, and he is building and loving, you get great recruits, you get great talent, and you got a great fan base, and you're in a great league. It's been a tough night for Palmer. Foul trouble. He's got nine points. No points. Oh, yeah. Is that going to be a goal, Tim? Yes. Good call. Wow, look at the elevation. Trust your shot. Go be aggressive. We want you to score. You can do that, too. We just don't want you to be a rim protector. And, and he, he's played free here the last couple of nights. He's very good. See how it's just amazing how close Nebraska is to steal and they haven't been able to do it. Missed shot here. Maybe they can get a five. Plenty of time to get back in this game. Tech doesn't allow anything easily, though. You push it, nothing's there. Help and recover. They're outstanding in their man to man defense. Palmer finally gets the deuce. And two teams in that Big Ten that's going to fight for a title. Too many turnovers for Nebraska. They haven't shot it well from three. They're five of 20 from outside. That's been a lot of the problem. Of course, Palmer in foul trouble early. That didn't help. And Texas Tech is just gritty. Like that. Moretti getting down on the floor. Jump ball. It's going to belong to them. Because of the way they move the ball, find open spots, and they hit open shots. Palmer. Roby wide open, passed up the shot, and he traveled. Or shooters nowadays. So if you don't take the open shot, then what happens is things, you know, guys are ready to get an offensive rebound. Roby only took five shots per game last year, and Tim Miles told him, hey, you got to shoot more for us, buddy. 1-3-1 one, one, zone defense. 41 to play. Tech trying to salt this one away and go to 5-0. But look where you're bringing the ball to. There were four jerseys you're taking it to. You've got nothing. Take the shot. Rely on the fact that you're going to make it. If not, you've got guys thinking you're shooting. Maybe offensive rebound. Because Tech generally doesn't give you a lot of operating room. No. When you get a chance, take advantage. Oh, Owens, good and, rebound. And how quick is Owens off his feet and the length that he plays it? Edwards doesn't get it to go. Tipped out. Mooney. And that was a freshman caught by Edwards, right? He, he had it. He didn't take it, and he thought, well, I'm open. I should shoot. Probably not the time to shoot. Culver pushed. This is a game that we said whoever won it was going to look back and say, this helped uh, you, you. You play power five plays against each other. It's a barometer for coaching staff to say, where are we at this point of the year, and where do we need to be? Memphis just signed a number one recruit in the country today. Penny Hardaway, the new head coach at Memphis. will be on the ESPNU December 1st. Duke looming out there. But uh, that Big 12 schedule, of course, will be daunting. Yep. Kansas, the favorite again. Kansas is loaded to have a great year. They, they got terrific talent. Here tonight in this game. And he's got the most of anybody in the game here tonight. So he's looking to create a shot. He's more active. What does that tell you about Mooney? Does that tell you that, you know, he's 
trying to create his shot. He, he's constant motion on the offensive end. Constant motion. Well, he moves to the corner here. Find an open load. Look at the aggressiveness. Now, Nebraska convert on this possession. Boy, they just don't get easy looks, though. They're pushing. They, that's a tough shot. Wow. Off balance. Good hustle, but on fire. Yeah, and it hit four of their first five shots. It looked really good early. Yeah, they've won uh, all of their games by at least 23 points. They could lose by double digits here tonight. Owens. Francis, I think he's been really good tonight. Out there. He's solid. Boy, Sherman, if you're going to shoot it, shoot it. No such short argument. Sherman argument. Palmer stumbles. Came down from Lincoln. They've won a couple tournaments here in Kansas City. The last one, a Big Eight tournament in '94 with Piakowski and Boone and Eric Strix. Yeah, on, I think baby. a lot of people were thinking that this would be a rebuilding year, but I, you know they don't look like a team that's going to struggle this year. Well, it's rebuilding in a way that you've got to find what players work and where, how, what to get right. You're always, I think they'll always be building this season. They'll just keep getting better as they understand each other. Not a good pass. Fortunate for Tech to keep holding. Pressure. Timeout. Glad he didn't throw his shoulder out when he threw the T-shirt up. <laughs> well, can you imagine? He's going to sign some autographs before he leaves the Sprint Center, I'm sure, here tonight. He has to be pleased with what he has seen. Now can Texas Tech close this one out? Five to shoot. They're using the clock all the way down. Culver steps in. Got it! kind of night. That kind of night for the Red Raiders. Wow. Hey! Bank one in. Shrug of the shoulders, a smile. Let's take the trophy back to love here. Culver has 24, a couple shy of a career high. We'll see if he can get it here in the next minute, 40. Culver will get it. He's a special player, special talent. Culver. He's had 20 since halftime. without coaches to say okay we got to get better in some areas right if we don't get past breaks we got to find ways to score to half court right so if your cuts are hard and, and it build on it they've got a great chance to have a great year yeah. pick fourth in the big ten expect to have a good so we'll try it again here so we'll roll, it. roll this ball again and no just straight ahead there we go and if you're tech you travel back to Lubbock with a uh, Playing full of confident players. So Texas Tech got behind by 13 yesterday against USC. Got behind by nine at one point early in this game when Nebraska came out with a high season. Boy, Mooney's a good fit, isn't he? He's <laughs> terrific. And I mean, he's just, he's got a leadership quality. And you blend him in with, a, with they've got leadership, you see him. Huggin Francis, who's a senior, redshirt senior. They got veterans. They've got toughness. They came in here and beat a USC team of the Pac-12 and now a Big Ten team in, in Nebraska yeah. because it says something about their league. It's always one of the deeper leagues. Oh my goodness! In the country, let alone the Power Five. Final seconds here in Kansas City. It's been fun. Seen some good ball. These teams have learned a little bit more about what to expect as they look forward to conference play. 70 to 52, the final. Texas Tech is 5 0.